Pushing Back the Shadows, support and awareness for mental health. Hello and welcome to episode 50 of the Pushing Back the Shadows podcast. Do you know what? It's a bit of a milestone. I did not think we'd make 50. And yet, I'm really pleased that we have. So thank you to all of you who listen. It's great to have your support. So today, we're going to look at how sometimes we just have to take it. Because... Wouldn't you agree with me that when you're dealing with people who have mental health conditions, sometimes things can get a little bit nasty? You're liable to get snapped at, pushed away, shouted at, perhaps even verbally abused to a little, um, to a certain point. It happens, doesn't it? And, see, this is the thing. A lot of people would kind of hear something like that. You know, something that one of these people struggling with a mental illness would say. Or hear them snap, or something like that. And they'd take offence. It would put their back up, and off they'd go. They'd be like, yeah, no, I'm not taking this jog on, mate. And yet, sometimes, friends and family members, we have to take it, don't we? Let's have a look a little deeper at what I mean. Because, um, for example, if I'm on a bad day, I do tend to get quite grouchy. And I'm not necessarily feeling angry, it's just I'm a little bit more short-tempered, a bit less impatient, and... I can be very, very snappy. I don't necessarily mean it that way. Because, you know, if you're talking to the people that you love and care about, would you really want to snap at them? Would you really want to hurt them? I'm now having visions of the gingerbread man from Shrek singing that, Do you really want to hurt me? Do you really want to make me cry? Oh, help me. What what has my mind become? But... Really, sometimes we can get very snappy. We can say things that we don't necessarily mean. And it can cause these uncomfortable situations. It can cause arguments. It can cause, you know, really big falling outs. And it can hurt people. But how do we deal with that? Well... I have one very important question to start you off, okay, because this is the the really big point that needs to be asked. How much are you willing to do to help the person in question? Okay, how much are you willing to do to help the person in question? That's part number one. Part number two is how much do you care about the person? Okay, now those aren't judgments. Those are questions that you need to ask yourself. Because it's different for everybody. Really, it is. But, so in order to help somebody, support them through their mental illness, we have to be a little bit thick-skinned. Because, as I said, you know, there are things that people are going to say, things that they're going to do, they might snap at you, they might get angry, and it can be really kind of, not necessarily brutal, but it can be painful. But we have to remember, really have to remember, that it isn't personal. Okay? I mean, you think about conditions like bipolar, um, borderline personality disorder, these things come with a certain extent of mood swings. It may be that we've just crashed, or that we're having trouble, I mean, especially where personality disorders are concerned, we're having trouble controlling the emotions that we're feeling at that particular time. We're not doing it to be mean, 
be hurtful. It just might be that at that moment in time, we're having a little trouble controlling it. And that's where the thick skin comes in, because it's very easy to take offence to these. I mean, what, what would you normally do if somebody snaps at you? Or if somebody, you know, says something that can be quite aggressive? What would you do? Would you walk away from them? Would you give them a second chance? It would probably get you back up. Okay, I don't know you, but I'm, I'm kind of assuming, because a lot of people, it would get their backs up. But if we were to walk away, if we were to say, mm, yeah, no, no, sorry, I'm not having this, who would step in and help? Because how do we know that we're not all that person has? It's food for thought there. Because sometimes, with regards to all the, um, like maybe the verbal abuse or, or whatever, the way these people react to situations and the way their mental illness manifests itself. Because, let's be honest here, mental illness is very individual. And if you're supporting whoever it is, you know, relative, friend, co-worker, if you're supporting them, you'll know more of how they'll react than I do. I can only go off what I've experienced. But that's where the thick skin comes in. Because we've got to look past it and recognise that actually, this isn't them. If it's out of character, if it's quite surprising, then it might not be them. It might be the mental illness talking. So sometimes, we just have to take it. You're listening to Pushing Back the Shadows. There is, however, a cautionary note to this, um, this little tale, if you like. It's all very well saying that sometimes we have to take it, but the key part there is sometimes. Now, I'm not just saying about when we're not in a good place to take it, because I know we all have bad days and sometimes it's, it's a case of, oh, for crying out loud, look, I just can't deal with this at the moment. But it's not that kind of sometimes. Because with every single situation, there comes a point when we, as the friend or the family member, are taking too much. And this is where, as I said at the start, this kind of theme of used and abused comes into it. So this is, for example, if somebody is constantly mouthing off at you, constantly snapping, constantly taking you for granted. If there doesn't seem to be any discernible pattern of, well, actually, no, that's not them, this is. Like I just said now, you know, if it's out of character for them, then it might be their mental illness. But if it's not so much out of character, if it's starting to become a frequent occurrence, or maybe it's just been frequent from the beginning, then it might be too much. But what do we do? Well, first and foremost, and this applies generally to any situation, our safety is the most important. Because we can't look after anybody else if we're not looking after ourselves. So we have to remember to practice that self-care. We've also got to remember, especially if, for example, when somebody gets really down, they get quite physically aggressive. We have to put our safety first. We have to look after ourselves. Now, in terms of taking too much, the first thing you have to remember is that you don't have to take it. 
Because at the end of the day, there are plenty of services out there that will help. And if you feel like you can't cope with the situation, don't just abandon them. No, because that's not what I'm saying at all. But maybe give them a crisis number. Refer them to Samaritans, or Mind, or somebody else. Refer them on to one of the resources that deals with mental health. Because at the end of the day, you are, for want of a better word, a lay person supporting them. And whether you feel like you have to, or whether it's kind of the kindness of your heart, or whatever, you're making that decision to support them. But at the end of the day, you cannot let it destroy you. So what do we do? Well, first and foremost, it's important to challenge the behaviour. Now, I'm not saying that you've got to kind of tell them what they're doing is they're shouting and screaming in your face. But perhaps when it's calmer, when they're on a better day, say, well, do you realise that this is how you've been? And just make sure that they're aware that that is how they're being. And this covers anything, you know, whether they're getting physically violent, whether they're getting verbally abusive, uh, whether they're just snapping or shouting more, or not even doing anything, you know, just kind of sitting around doing nothing. And for all intents and purposes, maybe appearing lazy. They might not be. But as I say, you know what what kinds of things the people you support would exhibit. Because challenging the behaviour gives them the opportunity then to correct it. Because with some of them, they might not even realise that they're doing it. I went through a phase where I was very short-tempered and I was very quick to raise my voice. And Cheryl pointed that out to me. Told me I was raising my voice much more. Um, usually when the four-year-old wasn't doing what she was supposed to, what she'd been told to for the umpteenth time. But once she'd pointed it out, it was like, yeah, do you know what? I have been. I need to keep more of a check on that. So I did. Okay, sometimes it's a close call and it's a really tight leash and so on, but I rein it in. I don't shout as much, even though inside my head I'm going, Oh, for goodness sake, how many more times do you need to be asked? I don't do it. Because a little secret here is that although we might feel like slaves to our mental health, we're not. We have the ultimate choice. And I know it's a controversial thing to say, but we do have a choice. Not choosing whether to be depressed or not, or anxious or not, but we can choose to be mindful of our behaviour. And we can try, and that's the key word, try, to modify it. Yeah, in some cases it might take time, but we can make that choice. So when do we stop taking it? When do we stop taking whatever these people are throwing at us? Some might say never because they may hold that person in a high enough esteem, but I'd always say challenge it first and then see what happens. If the behaviour changes, great. If it doesn't change, that's when you need to be careful. Because if it doesn't change, either they're not willing to change that behaviour, or maybe they still don't realise and you need to challenge it again. But really, if they're not willing to change the behaviour, then why should you stay around? Because in any relationship, whether it's carer to patient, whether it's 
parent to child, child to parent, friend to friend, whatever that relationship, there has to be a certain element of give and take. And if the person you're supporting is not willing to try and modify their behaviour, that's the point where you need to get yourself out, where you need to walk away. Doesn't mean you can't come back later. Doesn't mean you can't continue to care from a distance. But you need to put your own mental well-being and your own safety high up on the list. Now these are just my thoughts. I can't tell you what to do. And as we say on every disclaimer, I'm not medically qualified. I am not an expert. This is based on my experiences. But I'd rather, if you're supporting someone, I'd rather not see you break. If you have any questions about that, please do get in touch. And I will happily answer them, or talk about it further. But you take care of yourself. That's all from me. I'll catch you next week. You've been listening to Pushing Back the Shadows. To find out more, head over to pushingbacktheshadows.com and hit subscribe to get all of our latest updates straight to your inbox. Alternatively, connect with us on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Alex Davis PBTS, or you can visit us on Twitter at Alex Davis PBTS. Enable Pushing Back the Shadows to continue supporting people in the mental health community, their friends and their family. By pledging just $1 a month, you could help us to continue supporting people with depression, with anxiety, with bipolar and other mental illnesses. You can also unlock exclusive rewards behind the scenes, uh, sneak previews of upcoming posts and much, much more. So head over to www.patreon.com forward slash Alex Davis PBTS to find out more.